Hey everybody out there, my name is Dragnix, and oh boy, it's been an interesting couple of days in gaming, hasn't it? I mean, I know I like staying with games. I like staying with the content within games and letting it speak for itself. But I cannot sit back and not talk about the whole Valve modding situation because they may have just opened Pandora's box and unleashed a stream of evil or a stream of concerned fans, whatever way that you want to look at it, in terms of the gaming community because modding has always been something close to the PC gaming world. And the fact of the matter is, I'm the video I'm showing you right now is of Synergies, a Torchlight 2 mod. In fact, it was one of the first videos I did. It was the first video I did on this channel. And it took me three weeks. It took me a lot of time and a lot of mods to go through. And needless to say, I love mods. And the, what Valve has done, I'm going to go over exactly what the whole situation is, it's for those who don't know, very quickly. But I'm also going to draw parallels with it and open source, as well as some experiences that I've had with regarding the modding and open world community. It's, it's going to be an interesting video, I think. And I know this is going to be different for me in terms of me just sort of rambling, but, you know, this is a situation I really want to talk about with you guys. Now, for those who don't know, Steam during the week, and Valve in particular, introduced a paid mod system via the Steam Workshop. Skyrim was the first, is the first game that has been hit with this. So there are certain mods within the Steam Workshop now that a person can pay for in terms of that mod and get, that modder can get a percentage of the overall profits at this point. Now the deal right now is that the modder gets 25% and 75% goes to the developer and Valve. Um, it is rumored that it, the Valve gets 30% and Bethesda gets 45% at this point. Now, community reaction to this has been volatile. The fact of the matter is there has been no situation in terms of a, a system in terms of mods. Chivalry Medieval Warfare did something with, with a whole paid mod situation or paid content, but really when it comes down to it, with a system in place, Skyrim's mod situation is the first real implementation of this. And needless to say, the community reaction is very strong in terms of what is going on. It doesn't help where we have situations where there may be some censorship going on that has been unconfirmed at some points. There have been Valve's unfortunate PR situation where they don't really talk about anything. They just sort of implement it and let it happen. And needless to say, there is a lot of anger all over the place. There is a lot of different opinions, too, if you look. A majority of people are taking the side that mods should be free. And that this, this is going to maybe ruin the gaming industry, in particular PC gaming. I want to go into that, and I want to talk about all these situations and the concerns that people have. Because in the end, I do think that modders should be compensated for their work if possible however there are a lot of problems with the way this current system is implemented and i really want to go now one of the biggest points that are being brought up right now is the, is the revenue split the 25 percent goes to the modern 75 percent goes to the developer now again like i said before it seems to be set by the developer based off the rules that are posted by valve themselves um that the cut that Bethesda decided to take was 45%. And then Steam takes its normal 30% cut, so on and so forth. Now, I'm gonna actually look at this on both sides of the argument. The thing is, is that a lot of people are like, that's way too low. I agree with you, but when I see like, you know, 50% to the modder, I do have to wonder what the good percentage is, unfortunately. Now, I will argue this. Let's start with the negative points because I think they're the more obvious ones. There's a lot of legwork that can go into a mod. A mod like Sky UI, a mod like Synergies, where it's just a hell of a lot of work to do and can transform a game. Um, the arguments that I see regarding, well, okay, it's, you're working off of somebody else's content. That's true. You're working off of a ready set of scripts or a ready set of development tools that were given to you by the developer. However, the thing that that what can happen is that it can also cause additional sales. The thing is, is that I think one of the big things that I look at is City Skylines. 
City Skylines was a good base game, let's not get that wrong. But the thing is that the mod mods that came out for it and the modding capability, I am pretty sure, and I can't back it up with facts at this point, it's too early in, the, in this um, sort of City Skylines lifetime at this point, but I'm pretty sure based on what I've been seeing on Twitter and on Facebook and I, so on and so forth, that it did factor into people's purchasing decisions. The fact is, you know, you get an airplane view of your city, you get, you know, traffic lights that turn on and off, Nerd Cube mentioned that. It does drive some sales at that point. There is a downside to that, though, and it's part of the positive points I want to bring out in terms of the way the split is currently set up right now. There is a sense of IP and damage risk in terms of a mod. If a particular mod comes out and it could actually damage the idea of that community at that point or that game. Just take a look right now at the reviews over in Skyrim's main game page. It actually dropped from overwhelmingly positive to mostly positive. You don't think that modding situation had something to do with that? Of course it did. And that's an example of where a bad PR experience can really hurt a game. The thing is, is that when you take things like, let's say, like Resident Evil Revelations 2 and the whole no co-op thing, that's an, that's an obvious one. But let's say if somebody makes a mod, I don't know, the horse testicle mod that apparently is now on the Steam store. Somebody looks at that and be like, are you kidding me? You're going to allow that? And may associate that with Skyrim and Bethesda. Bethesda takes a risk in allowing the mods for creation. Now, a normal, I want to say rational human being would be able to disconnect that. We know for a fact that rationality isn't exactly some people's strengths. And so, unfortunately, there is going to be some damage that could be caused to a company's reputation based on the modding scene. Now, before, the whole idea is, is that this is the whole community sort of just going off on their own. The free concept is that, you know, it sort of gives them flexibility in that sense, where they can sort of disassociate. It's like, we're not paying them, we're not giving them any money, they're doing what they can, we're sort of, our hands are tied at this point. We gave them the tools, we can't be, not, uh, we can't be held responsible for that. But once you introduce the paid situation, it's like, well, wait a minute, you are taking benefit from this now, Hold on a second, you do have some legal responsibility. Now, curation in terms of the mods makes a huge difference, obviously, in this case. The fact of the matter is, is that if you see a mod like that, you stop it before going sooner, but then you get into the arguments of free speech, too. Like, somebody recommended, or somebody made a point about an ISIS mod. If somebody made a point, an ISIS mod within a game, technically it's free speech, but my god, the PR backlash that would happen because of that, you can see where things get a little bit dirty. Not only that, another positive point is that, again, a lot of these modding communities, they do a lot of good work, but they do have, have some tools at times in order to be able to create the creations in question. City Skylines had a great modding set from what I understand. Um, Torchlight 2 had a good modding set in terms of what it was available for modders to use. Those resources take a long time to develop. It's not something you develop overnight. And there's a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. I should know, I've done software before, to provide a good base tool use for people to use. So the idea of somebody else then taking that and making a lot of money off of it, you see where that can be a little bit frustrating as a developer? Now, whether or not they are entitled to the 25%, I think that is a little bit low. Again, you have a lot of legwork that goes into these mods, and especially those transformative mods. I think that's where I think the major problem I have with it is, is that it really should be based off of the sort of quality of content in question. Now, you can talk about price all you want about that, setting that, but it matters about how much support you're gonna give. If you just make a, a mod that goes out and you know does one little thing and sort of leave it out there and make like a little bit of money off of it, I don't think it should get the same percentage as a mod that's going to be updated regularly at this point. And so I do think there are some problems there. But this leads into my next subject regarding this. A lot of people are saying that it's going to damage the modding scene in terms of sort of that mystique around modding. There is, now, a lot of people are like, well, you know, it's not 
evol- it hasn't evolved yet. It, the fact of the matter is it wasn't available in terms of price. And that's right. The, the fact of the matter is you couldn't make money off of it. That it, itself was a legal area. The fact is you're making content based off all their users' content. There is a comparison that can be made, though, and that's the open source community. For anybody who doesn't know what the open source community is, it's basically, in the software world, it's people who write these elements of software that are free to use and free to use in a variety of ways. Now, you can point to Linux being the prime example. That is just a set of open source packages that are compiled together. It's a kernel, obviously, but they had consider, considering all the packages that are out there, it's a collection of those, and it's free for people to use and to build off of. Now, I will say this. Within those source packages, you may have packages that get used in a public application or a paid application. For example, the library curl. Um, library curl is used for like HTTP requests, FTP stuff. I used it myself before in certain paid programs in terms of programs that went with software that was for deliverable. The thing is, is that I uh, technically the company that I was working for made money off. Okay, simple enough. The thing with that, though, is is that if, let's say, Curl changed their implementation, then things get a little bit interesting. Whose responsibility is it to take care of it? Well, technically, it's mine. The fact of the matter is, is that even though they changed their source, maybe I don't update, that's fine, but maybe if I do update, okay, hold on, it's on me to change it at that point, and I willingly chose to use that package. I can sit there and complain about the change um, implementation all I want, but I had a choice to use it, and the fact of the matter is, there is no support package. There is no paid package. So, there, there's downfalls with that, too. The thing that has br- been brought up with Steam is that once something breaks with this whole new modding paid situation, the consumer is now out of luck. The fact is, is that basically what the store page says is that you ask nicely for the modder to take a look at it. We all know that's not how business works, unfortunately, and and it sort of shows Valve's inability to use PR in terms of understanding what the end user is talking about, what they want, what they need in terms of customer support. But there is a, there's a hint of truth to that, in sense. Let's take a look at something like the, the downfalls regarding, I don't know, OpenSSL. There was a Heartbleed virus that was, or Heartbleed exploit, I should say, that came out of OpenSSL that caused a lot of problems with HTTPS and secure connections. Now, there were actually a good amount of implementations regarding the websites that actually used this OpenSSL open source package. Was it OpenSSL's fault? There was a lot of blame thrown on OpenSSL, but hold on a second. This is open source, this is what they decided to implement. Is it their fault that that you used their package? Well, technically it wasn't, because of one simple thing, licensing. You see, that's where this modding situation could really learn a lot from the open source community. Licensing is a way for creators of packages and creators of implementations of software or mods, for example, to be able to protect the source and themselves from certain situations. Now, there are a lot of different license types out there in terms of the open source community, and this is something that could really help this whole situation with Skyrim. The fact of the matter is, is you've got a lot of mods on there on the paid side that may be dependent on a completely different mod. One of the mods that were removed from the Steam store in terms of the paid mod was a phishing mod because it was reliant on something else. Now, there's a whole situation there regarding the modder talking to Valve's legal team, them saying it's okay because it's free, and it's but the modder themselves are like, wait a minute, you're using my work without my permission. I don't like the fact that you're having paid por- portions of it. And it just led to this whole complicated situation. Licensing can really take care of that situation. The fact of the matter is, is that there are certain levels of licenses that allow for certain levels of use. If, like, let's say, like GPL, for example. Now, you can protect yourself with certain licenses, even going so far as saying, if you use this in a product, you cannot sell it. And there is a binding contract in that. Those licenses are obtained, and it can lead to legal lawsuits. 
it would help this whole situation. And that's what really bothers me is that no one thought of this. The interconnecting connectivity of these mods, Sky UI is a, is a popular mod within the Skyrim world. And the fact of the matter is Skyrim is really, there's a lot of mods based off that. It's going to a paid system now. So every mod that is now relying on Sky UI is now sort of out of luck. They either, you either have to pay for it or you've got to rework your entire mod in order for it to work. You see where the major problem there lies. And it's part of the reason why I'm sitting here and going, why did Skyrim of all games be the sort of test subject for this? The fact of the matter is, is that Skyrim has been out for a while and has a shitload of mods out there. Now one can argue that it's the biggest example of the modern community. You want to use that to be sort of your guinea pig. I argue completely the opposite. It's too big at this point and has too many complications. And not only that, has a history now in terms of like Nexus mods and things like that to be able to start with. The fact of the matter is you are now retroactively implementing this paid mod system to a system that was free before. Of course people are going to be angry. Now, if you would have done this with, let's say, an, uh, an upcoming game or a game maybe that's in early access that you could have done something where you introduced it modding to it, then I think that the community would have been a lot better served and a lot more able to deal with this situation. The fact of the matter is, I think a majority of people, and, I, and this, is, this is my own opinion, I've seen people who said that modders shouldn't get paid whatsoever. It's the same argument I see against YouTube creators, and being a YouTube content creator myself, I find, find that to be a very, very poor argument. The fact of the matter is, is that regardless of the content that you're using, there is a sense of work. That there's work being put into this video. It may not seem like it to some people. It may seem like me just talking for, you know, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. But the fact of the matter is, is that, you know, I did do my research. I did take a lot of time to look into these issues, very similar to what a reporter would do when he's looking into an issue. His article may only be a thousand words, but what, what the work that went into that thousand words can be pretty considerable when it all comes down to it. The thing is, is that it needed precision handling and that's where Valve unfortunately really made a horrible decision in terms of what they chose to do with this. This needed a surgeon's touch. This needed a fine implementation because let's face it, the gaming world right now is very, very unfortunately skeptical of anything when it comes to price point or when it comes to new content. We've been seeing very bad practices with DLC and pre-order DLC. Goro from Mortal Kombat 10 is a prime example where content is being sort of broken off and sort of put into this paid situation where it's like, well, you can have this con extra content for a little bit more and a bang for buck problem is occurring. Um, a recent study came out saying that a majority of profit is coming from DLC. So it's not going to go away anytime soon. In fact, it may ramp up. And the the world of gaming is already in the situation where, you know, they feel like they're being nickeled and dimed out of things. We're seeing these pre-order packages. You see these situations where games are not coming out complete. And the consumer base is completely sort of like with their hands up in the air, like we're getting screwed over and over again. It's been feeling like a bend and break situation where they're being bent over and over and over and over again. Sooner or later, something's gonna happen where it's gonna break. And unfortunately for Valve, this may be one of those situations. Let's, I mean, just look at the, the nature of what has been going on in terms of the reaction of this. You know, again, I think people do recognize that there are some good value into giving people money for the for creating mods the fact of the matter is is that they, some of the greatest games that i've played originally came from mods team fortress 2 is a game that i have got let's go let's take a look right now i'm going to take a look exactly how many hours i have in tf2 because i want to make this point at this point i think i have like 3,000 hours at this point 3051 hours that is a game based off a of mod Valve's major series right now in terms of their current products, TF2, Dota 2, um, why can I not remember the third one at this point? They've got another game. What, whatever the game is at this point. 
they're all C uh, CSGO, thank you. Uh, I don't know who I'm telling thank you, it's myself, but CSGO. They're all mods. They all started as mods that created into another series of games for them. And so you could see this sort of issue here where it's just like, well, you made X amount of money. You made this huge amount of money out of these situations. And now you're paying for, you're, you're offering these paid mods. It feels like people are just, again, being like, okay, another price point to add to. Add to. In the end, there are a lot of problems with this. There are a hell of a lot of problems. And the thing is, is that I think what needs to happen is to take a very close look at, I think this needs to be rolled back at this point. I think the reaction has been too strong and too many things have come out of this in terms of problems that Valve did not either take into account or just haven't cared about at this point. And they need to realize that, wait a minute, we need to take another look at this. I think the licensing issues where you have content that is based off of other content is a huge one. I think the problem is is that if you have any dependencies, you're going to have this huge legal battles that could possibly pop up because, well, my stuff depends on his stuff. His stuff is free, but it doesn't necessarily work like that because even though he created the content and it's free, and I'm using air quotes on that, it's not technically your content necessarily to use at that point. Depends on the source, depends on what tools you are using. There is a inherent ownership of code. Even though if you produce it in an online forum, the way that mods have worked lately, it doesn't take into that source into account, unfortunately, and not in terms of licensing. And I think that's where the key element here is. If licensing was done well, in this situation, I think we would have a lot less problems. The revenue split still would be a problem. People are not gonna pay for mods and there's gonna be pirating. Unfortunately, that's the same situation with almost every game right now. I mean, the fact of the matter is is that pirating is still something that I see happening in the gaming world. People are make arguments, well, I wanna just test out the game, I just wanna take a look and see what the game is before I buy it. I see the argument, well, it's like buying grapes at a grocery store. I am just eating one to make sure they're good. I make the argument, well, how many grapes do you have to have before you realize that you've eaten half the stack and then you don't decide that, you know, it's not for you. If you did that at a grocery store, you'd probably be thrown out. But I have a very obvious, I'm biased in that because I'm a content creator and I was a software engineer where that was my livelihood at that point. If you, if almost everyone did that, guess what? I would be out of a job at that point because we couldn't pay bills. So there are sensitivities of this and I do think that there are things that need to be brought back to the table at this point. And Valve, this is a public message from me to you on this. You know perfectly well that your, your, your sort of organization system in terms of the free flow system, you're not a normal management company. You really need to take a think about how that is hurting you right now. Your PR in particular, no one wants to do customer service in terms of, some people do, I, I shouldn't say not everybody, but when you're hiring talented developers, for example, or talented marketing people, no one really wants to get to the customer service because not only is the fact that working with customer customers can be difficult at times, they can be unruly, and not only that, they can be downright lying at times, but the customer, technically is always right because that is your consumer base. You need to realize that when you introduce things like that, you need to have a PR element to it. You can't just release it into the world and hope for the best. Most of the time that has worked for you. This time it has really, really backfired on you. And not only that, you didn't learn a lesson at all with your green light system. It seems like, and based on what I'm reading now and what I'm seeing now, you are curating some of the content within it. How deep does that go? With the whole situation regarding the phishing mod, it's obviously that you didn't go that deep into it, into the source code, for example. It just, it's a whole bunch of new questions and I think where the solutions lie to at least some of them is in the open source world. Not only that, there are some solutions that are in the YouTubing world in terms of the current situation with YouTube and its content creators, fair use, so on and so forth.
All right. Some great treasure. This is me rambling for a long time on a subject that I'm obviously passionate about. So I hope you got something out of this video. And let me know what you guys think, because obviously I've done a lot of PC games in terms of games that I've introduced to you. And modding is a huge part of games nowadays. Tabletop Simulator, I played last night with a bunch of friends, is basically entire based on entirely on the Steam Workshop right now. That could be a difficult sell now, because you've got companies whose content was being used, maybe not with their permission, being put in the Steam Workshop and being like, oh yeah, you can play with this. There is an entitlement to those companies who took a lot of time to create the games like Dead Winter, for example, to have some kind of compensation for it. If you're selling it because of that, <sighs> All right, I will see you all later. Hey, thanks for watching. If you have a chance, leave some feedback and comments below. If you liked the video, hit that like button. And if you want more content like this, hit that subscribe button. This is Dragnik signing off, hoping that gaming brings as much fun to you as it does for me.